Building a great company is a marathon, not a sprint. Each week, Krista Inkeman and the team at Tank New Media take on growth challenges, explore technology, and interview business leaders that are always upping their game. If you're ready to build scalable systems to drive your business forward, this podcast is for you. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Today, we have Austin Heimerman with us, and he has expertise in eliminating the friction between business and marketing um, with automation, resulting in an overall better brand experience. And today, we're going to be talking a little bit about conversational bots. Welcome, Austin. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Cool, cool. So tell me, what is a chatbot? A chatbot is a chat tool um, on your site or on a social platform that you can take a a first best guess at what somebody's going to want and help guide them through a conversation. Okay. So why would people kind of utilize this type of tool? You would use this type of tool to make an experience better. You see a lot of you see a lot of chatbots or or want to be chatbots. <laughs> um, right. Probably a lot of those, right? <laughs> There's some pretty bad experiences out there. Um when when you ask for the weather, you you want to get the weather, not some sm- snide joke. Unless you signed up for the <laughs> snide weather joke <laughs> chatbot. Um, when you're trying to create a chatbot, you want to focus on making an experience better. Okay, so it's really kind of figuring out why somebody is there. Why would they be asking a question? Kind of guiding them. Yeah, I I think that would be a good way uh, to first look at a chatbot is a guide. A guide. Okay. So are people actually using these now? You kind of alluded to like there's maybe some wannabes out there. (laughs) Yeah. I know. I know there's like a a Whole Foods chatbot out there and they, hello, like it starts out saying, hello, how can I help you today? And here's some options. Would you like to browse for recipes, search for a specific recipe or find a location? And those are the things that the bot is built to do instead of Hey, how can I help you today? Open-ended question. Sure. Um, it it helps guide you to something that one is going to help the experience, and is two is capable, and it was designed to do those things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that kind of makes sense with the way that we think about usability on the internet and giving people specific options or specific things that they can do, rather than just here's everything you could possibly do and choose one. It's you know, hey, maybe you want to go here, here, here. Is that kind? Of, I mean, it sounds like that's kind of the way you're thinking about chatbots as well as really kind of honing in. Yeah, when you first engage with the chatbot, it is very much that. It's it's very much like a website, and here's the things you can do. But where the chatbot comes in handy is if you answer one of those questions, and it gets to, and you ask the right questions, and and go into that kind of a conversational mm-hmm. um, setup. This is the power of the chatbot is being able to direct to a human sure. that needs the human detail touch or that human the human touch in that conversation. And this allows the chatbot allows you to scale because mm-hmm. a chatbot can intercept all these incoming messages, whereas a human can't do all of that all at once. Sure. Um, a chatbot is good at repeating a task and getting you know basic answers. That a human doesn't necessarily like they can, but that's not scalable. And that's sure. when that chatbot goes through and gets those basic questions out of the way, it can decide you can program into it or build it. When a chatbot gets those basic questions out of the way, it can be built in a way that if that person doesn't actually need to talk to a human, it doesn't. And it doesn't take that time from the human that the person needs to actually sure. be routed to a person at the company to help them. Gotcha. So it kind of takes the tasks that maybe a person doesn't have to do that could be automated and kind of gets those out of the way. And then if there is a real reason for somebody to have a conversation, they kind of filter through those people till they actually can have those um, interactions at the end. Cool. So it kind of helps streamline everything, um, make sure everybody gets communicated with, but doesn't necessarily have to take a person to do that. Very cool. So you kind of talked a little bit about Whole Foods as maybe a good example. Is there maybe a bad example of a chatbot or something that's maybe been or experience that maybe could be optimized, we could say? (laughs) Definitely. I alluded to the 
that weather. I, I had. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was asking a, a bot about weather, and it, it was trying to joke around, and you know that that's not timely or helpful. Yeah. So I, I need to decide what kind of shoes I needed or or coat I needed that day. Sure. Like, is it going to be wet? Do I like? Yeah. Don't wear the nice white sneakers, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So really, kind of keeping your your uh, audience in mind yep. in what they're ultimately trying to do, even. Even if your brand may be a little tongue in cheek, making sure that it's appropriate. Yeah, I mean, there's time and place for it, but yeah, make sure it's the time and place. Absolutely. So, are there lots of online tools or lots of tools available to help make online chat possible for people? There's a plethora of tools, <laughs> and they they span anywhere from act- doing live chat really well, and that's just the one on one communication between a person and a person. And then there's other tools that also do live chat, but there's a, a that bot element. So a bot can kind of be the the incoming concierge service. Like sure. there's the restroom, there's the there's your hotel room, there's the cafeteria. Right. And direct them to where that person's actually needing to go based on what they told you. Gotcha. So are there a few things that you might look at? So since there are a bunch of tools, are there a few things maybe you want to keep in mind, you know, when you're looking for what tool is going to be best for you? Sure. There's there's a few uh, just top level simple things you can look for. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that it's easy to use. Sure. Because um, if it, if it's complicated and hard to make updates, or it needs like manually programmed, like sure. with programming languages, chances are <laughs> you're not you're not going to be able to iterate on it at the rate you want to. Sure. Um, and that it integrates with a CRM so it can log these conversations. So if you have, for example, an unhappy customer coming to you on the support line and you don't know that coming like as a human coming into it, see if they're not sure. happy, you don't want you want to. There's a certain way to handle that yeah. that you would yeah. differently. Absolutely. Kind of having that log all right there for that person so mm-hmm. you know what have they been chatting about in the past and how unhappy are they and And this is not the time the to make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't joke about the weather right now. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So is there like a time and a place or when and how should chatbots kind of ultimately be be used? Is there like a good time to have them and a bad time to have them? Something I see a lot of people when they first are introduced to a chatbot, they're they're excited about it and they just want to put it everywhere. Mm-hmm. They want to put it on every page, every site, <laughs> and it's the same bot. The problem with that is each page on your website or social media, it's a different experience. You, the, those pages aren't all trying to accomplish the same thing. Mm-hmm. And chances are a one-size-fits-all bot isn't the right answer because the page that it's on should be trying to accomplish something. And you should look at a, a bot as a an add-on um, to support the mission of that page, to support what that page is trying to do. So if you had a, a particular service page, maybe that bot centered around that particular service page or something like that? Yeah. If you have a machine that is good at doing one thing, you might ask specific questions about it, like a, pro- a machine product. Sure, sure. You might ask questions about that specific machine and its capabilities as gotcha. opposed to, hey, how can I help you today? Or yeah. what machine are you looking for? Well, yeah. I'm obviously on this specific machine page. Engage me with something that I may not know. That's relevant. Or that's relevant, yeah, about, yeah. about that specific machine. Yeah, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And again, it just seems or service, like, right? Yeah, like, it would be so much easier to respond to that versus I don't think anybody really likes... I mean, even when you're taking surveys or anything like kind of the open-ended answer scenario, because mm-hmm. it's like you can say anything in there. And it's so much easier if there's just an, an option and I can choose one of those or say an other if there is something different that I want. But it's it just seems like you would be able to get a lot more interaction that way. And that's that's where, that again, that's the power of the chatbot. If, yeah. if it is the other and it's not one of those things that the bot was built to do, we can send it to that human. And if enough of those similar things come in, we mm-hmm. can add add that as an option and kind of build that build that functionality out. Yeah. yeah, and this may be a really awful analogy, but it does remind me of kind of when the automated phone system came out, you know, and not every single call that came in had to go through the operator. You know, you could route somebody really easily to the place they want to go versus having to go through 5,000 different 
people to mm-hmm. to finally get to your end place if you know hey, I'm calling because I want to pay my bill. And sometimes you don't even have to have a person for that. You can just enter your account number right there and it's really easy. So it's kind of a, I know that's a little bit more on the traditional side, but it kind of seems like that's kind of where we're going with some of this web stuff is, you know, really just making those conversations and things easier and kind of automating those places where you just don't have to have people involved. So so the phone system, right, like an automated phone system, that's that's a general apo- approach to one singular number. Sure. And that's where bots are different is that you can have a different bot that's purpose built per yeah. section or per product or service. Yeah. So you could really kind of dive into each one of those and get specific really quickly. Make it very relevant to where that person at is in their journey. Really personalize learning. that experience for them. I could really see that adding a lot of value to their journey for sure. So what about a bad experience? What could that look like? So internally, a bad experience when thinking about chatbots is we're not trying to replace humans. We're just trying to elevate their time and help them solve problems or engage with the right people. And to keep in mind that the chatbots we're talking about, we're not we're not trying to create artificial intelligence like what Siri is or Alexa or the Google Voice Assistant. These are these are simpler, simpler uh, bots conversations that are just trying to com- complete or achieve a specific task or action, a download or or something like that. So we've kind of talked a lot about you know what is it, how does it work, so how can people actually kind of start working with this? So kind of alluded to putting things on different pages. So if people are planning on implementing a chatbot on their site, how should they kind of get started with their overall strategy? How could they, how should they kind of be thinking about this? I would look at your most valuable pages on your website and focus on one of them. Don't, don't try and create a one size fits all for the site. You won't see much success with that. Chances are you're going to see better success if you if you purpose build it for one action and then learn from that and expand and and build bigger bots later. But sure. start with something that can accomplish a specific task. And oftentimes those are those are things like maybe the home page or the home page where you could send them, you know, help guide them to the right place, sure. or a contact page um, where you could maybe book a meeting right mm-hmm. away, or a service page to help them product or service page where you can help them download a spec sheet easier gotcha. or something like that. Something so kind of that, a bigger purpose to that adds value and, and can make that experience better. Awesome. So is there a way that kind of you would attack figuring all of that out? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's basically four questions you need to answer in order to help guide the direction of the bot. Okay. So the four questions you would need to ask is, what page are they on? You know, are they are they on a home page? Are they on an educational page? Is it content? Is it a blog? And just answer that question where mm-hmm. where you're trying to focus. And then who is it? Are they do you know who they are? Is it an anonymous visitor? Is it a return visitor? Is it an ideal customer? So if it was a return return uh, visitor and they've they've been to the pricing page, you know, <laughs> 50 times, right? In in a week a chatbot could address that person that's been there 50 times differently than an anonymous visitor. Sure. Kind of digging into why haven't you pulled the trigger yet? Hey, you're yet? <laughs> really interested in this. Should we should we have a phone call yeah, or maybe I could answer your questions. Hey, check out this video. Yeah. What's going on, right? Very cool. So, what page? Who is it and where did they come from? Did they Google search and come there organically or did they directly go to a page? Are they coming from an ad? If they're coming from an ad, the messaging on the ad you can use the chat bot to support that messaging again. So if they're if they're expecting to have a 20% off coupon or whatever from an ad, the chat bot can say, hey, do you have a coupon today? You know, what sure. is it? Or hey, here's this 20% coupon, right? Yeah. Like and support that, engage them that way. Something that they're already expecting. Sure. And that's just a few examples of that. So again, what page, who is it, and where'd they come from? And kind of the last question, probably one of the one of the more important ones is why are they here? Are yeah. they trying are they trying to answer a question? Are they just evaluating your product or service to see if it's a good fit? Are they trying to just educate just in general? Do they need directions to maybe yeah. to maybe a product? Like if I was going to implement this product, what would I need? Or yeah. are they a customer and they need support and they do they have an issue? So if they have an issue, can we go ahead and 
create a support ticket that gets logged into the support system and just automatically creates it and automates it that way and makes a not so great experience better by yeah. making the submitting a ticket. I think that was the true test. If you can get somebody who's already irritated, let's say you, you know, you're an AC company or, you know, one of those companies that people they're just mad when they call because they don't want to spend money on your product or service, but they have to. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And if you can make that experience good and you can, you know, make those people happy, I really feel like you've won. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just to reiterate, what page are they on? Who is it? Where did they come from? And why are they here? Gotcha. And together, all of these questions will help you create a better experience for whoever's interacting. Awesome. So let's just chat a little bit about what the kind of structure of the conversation is, because we've talked about where they go um, and kind of what they do, but we haven't really talked about how you structure the conversation, because it seems like there's quite a bit that, of thought that would go into like, what do you actually say kind of on these things? You want to talk just a little bit about that? There's three basic building blocks to chatbot conversation. Um, first, you want to engage. You want to make something that first question they see, I keep saying, you know, how can I help you? But mm -hmm. and, unless we're getting specific on on what that's that's kind of the yeah. best example for now. Yeah. It's just so how can I help you it and make that catchy and kind of an icebreaker to the conversation or support what they would expect to see there. So sure. like the twenty percent ad, some some catchy, catchy line, engage. And then after they engage, you've got their attention and you can ask another question or get an answer so that you can understand what they're trying to do. Are they trying to learn more? Are they having an issue? And mm -hmm. then after you have engaged and you understand, now you can recommend what, what they need to do. That bot can send them to content that might be helpful with their situation or question or whatever, or it can direct them to a human or it can automate a task like submitting a ticket or booking a meeting. Sure. Okay. So we've kind of talked a few different ways about how some of these could be used kind of with different departments. Do you want to just kind of hit on maybe the top few departments or different ideas that the way spots uh, the way bots could be used if I can get that out? <laughs> sure. We can use chat bots in a lot of places that the customer journey happens in. So are they First learning about us, you know, let's let's create a marketing chatbot. Are they trying to buy from us? Let's create a sales chatbot. Are they a customer and need help or support on the product? Let's create a, a support chatbot. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. So I feel like we've talked about a lot of different things today, kind of covered the the broad spectrum of of chatbots in general. What are kind of the top few takeaways um, that we can leave our listeners with? I think the biggest takeaway is create better experiences. Always, always make sure that it's going to be helpful. Always add value and try and accomplish a specific task or action with that chatbot. Fantastic. And we actually have a chatbot starter guide that is available for download on the Tank New Media site. So you can go to tanknewmedia.com slash bots and download that starter guide as well if you're interested in kind of getting this kicked off. And I want to say thanks, Austin, for joining us today. I feel like you gave us a bunch of really cool ideas to get started with chatbots. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Learn more at tanknewmedia.com.